Hello and welcome back to Sakura Fantasy. Slowly, I open it again to have another look. It opens up to the exact same section that I was reading before. Well, I suppose this isn't as bad as I thought it would be. The dream did leave me feeling... exhausted. But I don't understand why, though. Raylin, are you alright? I hear Cor Kira calling out as she's walking into the room. I heard from Gwyn that you had a... She stares at me. She realises that I don't have my armour on. And her cheeks look similar to bright hot coals. I quickly open the book and clasp it around my chest, protecting my modesty. It doesn't really work that well, though. If anything, it makes this seem less wholesome than before. My face turns bright red as I look down at myself. I'm, I'm, I'm just reading, Kira. It's a good book. <clears throat> I see. She goes quiet for a little bit, taking her time to process the situation. Well, it's good to know that you're getting some rest. She awkwardly shifts on the spot, not really sure what else she should say. Uh, I think I will leave you to it then. You're obviously busy after all. Oh, okay, we can talk later. No, I think we'll be fine. You're okay, that's the important thing. She quickly leaves the room. All I can do is go back to reading my book. Another day passes without me even noticing it. As I lie in my bed and allow these thoughts to swirl in my mind, a familiar looking face pops up above me. I always catch you daydreaming, Raylan. Even during your time off, all you do is daydream. Were you worried that I was far seeing again? No. Why would I be worried about something like that? Anyway, daydreamer, I have some good news for you. The council requires additional guards to patrol the halls of the castle. You'll still be garrisoned here, however. I hope you will not neglect your duties or do any of that far seeing that you always do. Why do you always get so upset about that? So what if I use my gift whenever I feel like it? I don't have to explain anything to a lowly no- Oh, right, you're a guardsman now. Either way, I don't have to explain anything to you. There's a bit of red in her cheeks. What does she think I'm doing with my gift exactly? I'm, I'm gonna guess she's assuming you're doing exactly what you are doing with it, such as spying on people in the bath. You have to respect the privacy of others. Maybe pushing the boulder might have explained that better to you than I could. Again, she's threatening me with a boulder. Without and she's done that, yet never actually gone through with it, I wonder what's stopping her. Does she worry that I've seen something really embarrassing about her and might reveal it to the rest of the barracks? She thinks of me so little as a person, it's not very nice. By the way, I don't think becoming a guardsman means you're getting out of tra And by the way, don't think becoming a guardsman means you're getting out of training either. I'm going to work you to the bone, Raylin. You might get lazy guarding those boring halls in the castle, so you're going to need extra discipline. I look forward to it. I look forward to it, Kira. That's the spirit. You must face your challenges with determination. You'll be heading out first thing tomorrow. I hope you have your shin guards on the right legs this time. Having finished telling me what I need to hear, she disappears out of the room. And I swap my shin guards around just once. She's never going to let that go. It's my first day on duty in the castle. I'm pretty excited, to say the least. To think it's my first time that I've ever been on duty, and I'm going to be guarding the council chambers. I'm no longer just a novice, but an actual warrior. Even though it's just guard duty, it's still a step up in the world. Hey, I may, maybe I might find a monster or two hiding inside this place. And I'm this much closer to actually being on the exterior of the capital. I'll be fighting actual monsters before I know it. I've often wondered what happens in these chambers. These are the people who lead an empire. It's quite a responsibility to hold. Would Ardenia also be in there? Wandering in, I find a whole complement of guards at the entrance. Wearily, one of them turns to face me. I haven't seen you before. You must be one of those new poor souls who has to guard this chamber. Yes, I'm here on guard duty. Then I hope you can cope with boredom. I bet you have that I bet they have you patrolling the halls too. How did you know? Same thing happened to me. My instructor said I was getting a promotion. And that's the last thing you should be calling in this position. That's what my instructor told me too. Oh, uh, you fell for the same trick I did. Well, welcome to guard duty at the council chamber. There's one of them for every ministry in the city. All of them are quite boring, believe me. Oh, they're coming now. I hope you're ready. Now how come that guy gets actual armor? Oh, no, wait, no. I know the reason why that guy gets armor. Because he's a guy. Emotions for me to stand to attention. Take my time, let's do this right. I try not to rush myself. They might notice me getting ready, but it doesn't matter. It would look better if I didn't rush myself. 
As I stand ready, a group of men wearing hooded cloaks shuffles past me. Slowly, ever so slowly, they make their way to their seats. And when the last member takes his seat, one of the council men to the far left clears his throat. <clears throat> so begins the weekly meeting of the Capitol's councilmen. We will begin with a list of today's topics of discussion. Any member of the council, as always, may put forward requests for what is to be discussed first. Personally, I would like to discuss the matter of defence, specifically regarding the more vulnerable locations on the capital's outskirts. There have been additional attacks from the Mears guarding farms outside the walls. These creatures are obviously displaying higher levels of intellect, and we should approach them accordingly. Ugh, you bring this up every time we debate. They're just mindless animals. Their debates are really boring. It's always sh it's almost shocking to hear how boring they are. Given how numerous they are, of course the attacks on more vulnerable locations would be higher. Increased numbers alone do not account for the coordination of these attacks, my fellow councilmen. Ca councilmen? My fellow councilmen. They are deliberate and targeted. We need substantial. We need substantial proof before we can act on that information. How can we find proof when we are too busy defending ourselves against them? I'm yet to meet a warrior brave enough to explore the Myers. This is maddening. Why did Kira do this to me? I I'll be honest, this is the most interesting thing that's happened so far, to my mind. Maybe I just... I I'll freely admit, I happen to quite like stories about political manoeuvring, so you know. Then obviously our best course of action is to simply build our walls higher and stronger. As we have been doing for the past decade. We may have lost territory, but if we build an unbreakable fortress and slowly expand outward, we'll eventually reclaim it. Not if these attacks continue on the farms and traders. Coordinated or not, can we please organize support our troops pr to protect them? This is my first time on guard duty and I'm already sick of it. For being the effective rulers, they can't agree on anything. It's no wonder they ask guards not to speak about the discussions outside of these chambers. The rest of the Empire would believe them to be fools. Why isn't the Empress here? Isn't she supposed to be here too? And the councilmen don't look too concerned about asking for her thoughts on the matter. I can't believe that I wasted so much of my time trying to see into these chambers. All I would have found is the foolishness of men who have never seen actual combat. Oh well, I guess, what does the lowly guardsman know of politics of the capital? Keep paying attention, damn you. I can't let myself drift off. I have to stand to attention. As boring as this is. There is also the matter of increasing the guard around the castle. We've had increased attacks from monsters wandering through the sewer systems beneath the city. We've already posted additional guards around the castle, nothing to worry about. But aren't they novices fresh out of training? Don't we have anyone more experienced to post here? We simply don't have enough soldiers with the current recruitment methods. We have to start getting our novices out of training much earlier. We're suffering heavy losses on every front, and the only times we actually seem to succeed is when we rely on defensive tactics. Which leads to further credence that my idea of slowly expanding outwards would be the best method of reclaiming territory. Hmm, you make a fair point. We have to take less risky tactics if we are to preserve ourselves and our children. We want there to be a civilization left for them by the time we leave this world behind. I'm glad you agree. Just bear with it a little longer, we're almost out of here. Sure enough, the councilmen rise from their seats. Does that conclude our business here, gentlemen? All voices call out in agreement. Very well, as always, we will meet again next week. Manage your own ministry's matters until then. That was like a ten minute meeting. If that, in fact, that was probably a five minute meeting. As they shuffle out, I can hear a great sigh of relief escape my fellow guardsmen. Uh, I'm off duty now. No more wasting time listening to them. I'm out of here. He's good to his word, leaving without a care in the world. I wish I was so lucky. I still have to patrol the hallways. My very soul feels like it's been sucked out by their droning. The halls seem to stretch on forever as I drudge up and down them. Must I walk these halls for eternity? It feels like eternity to say the least. My first day as a guardsman hasn't been that great. All it has to offer is standing still for long periods of time, and listening to the councilmen argue among themselves. I'm not too happy about Kira doing this to me either. I was kind of expecting to see the Empress. Wouldn't she be here if the Council controls the Empire? Does she take an interest in what's happening to her Empire at all? Well, I guess it has nothing to do with me. I just have to do my duty as a guard, patrolling, standing to attention. Come to think of it, it's about time for me to leave. The changing of the guard will happen soon. As I'm about to leave, I hear something moving behind me, and a ghostly woman appears before me. She wears clothing suggesting that she's nobility of some sort.
Oh yeah, because the bloody um Oh what are they called? I can't even remember what they're called. Yeah, that that's really you know, traditional wear for royalty. Anyway. Her appearance is so striking that it leaves me dumbfounded for a moment. Excuse me, guardsman. Could you please help me with something? Her voice is soft and practically emotionless, and it takes me a moment to get over my shock and respond. Yes. My pet has become lost in these halls. Could you help me find him? A pet? Uh, what kind of pet is it? You'll know it when you see it. That doesn't really help me, you know. Do I even want to waste my time finding it? You better help find it. That's a direct order. Wandering around these halls, I look for any signs of a pet. She didn't really describe its appearance, though. Simply telling someone they'd know it if they saw it isn't good enough. And I suddenly stop when I hear meowing. It's a small furry black cat hiding behind one of the curtains. There you are. I've been looking for you. Approaching the creature, she picks it up and takes it over to a nearby chair. See, so yeah, what are those things called? I can't remember. The tiny cat bounds up to her chest, letting out a happy meow. Nuzzling her face, it gets comfortable and looks like it's going to fall asleep. I'm not sure if the noble woman is relieved or not. Her face is completely emotionless. Thank you for your assistance, guardsman. You look strangely familiar to me. Where have I seen your face before? I don't think we've met before, my lady. Is that so? Strange. I swear that we have. I'm afraid you're mistaken. Very well. It's apparent that the council is concerned for their safety. Oh, it pains me that the world has become such a terrible place and everyone has to be on guard. We once knew such light and joy, but now here we are, too scared to leave these walls. I'm happy to serve the Empire in whatever way the council needs me to. If I must be a guard, then so be it. Duty is not all there is to, st to serving my guardsmen. You must be prepared to think for yourself when the time calls for it. Idly, she looks away from me, towards one of the many windows carved out of the stone walls. What do you think of the stars? The stars? I don't know what to think about the stars. I see. I look towards the stars every day, wondering if they could ever fall from the heavens. Falling from the heavens? Is that even possible? Oh, it is possible. I have not seen it myself. One day, one of those stars will fall. One day. Her eyes, despite how vacant they are, seem so sorrowful. I hear a certain longing in her voice. Mm. Sorry, I'll do that line again. I hear a certain longing in her voice. A tiny shred of emotion. Before then, I do not believe that words are adequate to instill in you a true understanding. And you look like you're about to leave. I have one of my favour to ask of you, though. Anything I can do to serve? Watch the stars tonight. I... I don't understand. Why would I do that? Stars can fall from the heavens, my dear guardsman. Why not just look at the stars tonight? Perhaps a star will fall. Very well. You have my word that I will watch the stars. Thank you. And I'm sure you have other places that you need to be now. She leaves, just as quietly as she came, taking her tiny cat with her. And I just stand there for a moment, trying to make sense of what she was talking about. Who is she, anyway? Her very presence was overwhelming to be in. Oh well, I'll have to work it out later. I'm gonna get out of here. I haven't been able to sleep all night once again. The noble woman's words kept coming back to me. She spoke of the stars, of stars being able to fall from the heavens. How could it even be possible? Nothing's fallen from the heavens before. Sneaking past my fellow novices, I look outside the tiny window in our barracks. The stars are always so clear in the sky. How could one of those distant lights plummet from the heavens? I wonder what a star is actually meant to be. But they're so far away, I'd, well, I'd never be able to see one up close. <laughs> well, they are... You'll find out what they mean one day, I think is... Uh, you know, it's, it's good to have a goal, scientifically speaking, rather than just saying, does it matter? Because of course it matters. If I have to live for another 200 years to find out what they mean, I will. While it may be seemingly impossible to grasp, I mustn't let that daunt me. All of these glittering lights in the sky... Perhaps the Empress knows what they are. Oh, this is all too much for me to handle tonight. It's like there's a hive of insects buzzing inside my head, telling me that I need to know with a thousand tiny voices. 
My far seeing has always come with an overwhelming sense of curiosity. I'm always looking where I'm not supposed to. But now my gift cannot reveal any secrets for me. Maybe that's why I'm so frustrated by what the noble woman said to me. She's the only person who knows. And I can't find a way to figure it out myself. Perhaps I'll never know what the stars truly are or if they mean anything. It doesn't mean that I can't enjoy the way they sparkle in the sky. Raylan, you're still awake. Gwyn groggily emerges from her bed. And she rubs her eyes before she looks at me again. You wouldn't be spying on anyone, would you? It just seems kind of suspicious for you to be awake at this hour. Yet another accusation. I can't get a moment's peace, no matter what time of day it is. Even Gwyn is suspicious of me, and it's not fair. I'm not Gwyn. I just couldn't sleep. I've had a lot to think about. So what are you thinking about, then? It's... Uh, it's not really something I can talk about. Then you were spying on someone. I should have known. You always deny it. I was not. Look, you know full well what I look like when I'm far-seeing. You didn't see me doing that, did you? But I haven't been awake this whole time. You could have been doing it before, then... Why are you the one scolding me? Shouldn't it be Kira? Please lower your voice. You wouldn't want to get caught, would you? No! No, I don't. Besides, I wouldn't mind if it were me you were watching. What was that, Gwyn? I didn't say anything. Why are we even having this conversation? We're saying nothing worthwhile to each other. All Gwyn's doing is throwing around accusations. So come on, Raylin. What's on your mind? There was this woman at the castle. She talked to me about things I didn't really understand. What did she talk to you about? Why did she talk to you in the first place? I was patrolling the halls of the palace when she lost her pet. I helped her find it and she started speaking with me. I don't know why. She was confiding in me about what she thought about the council and other things. What did she look like? Silver-like hair, vacant grey eyes, pale as a wraith glimmering in the moonlight? Gwyn grows silent after hearing that. I see. What did she talk to you about, Raylan? She asked me if I thought stars could fall from the sky. I still don't understand why she asked that, though. I don't know either. Gwyn looks away, troubled by the news. She's usually quite knowledgeable about topics like these. It's no wonder that you're unable to sleep. Now I'm not going to be able to sleep either. Oh, I love a good mystery. I don't. She was speaking in riddles. Why can't she just be straightforward and outright say what she means? Because it was blatantly either the Empress or possibly the Empress's daughter. But let's be honest, they haven't stated that a daughter exists, so I'm going to assume it's the Empress. Because it's kind of blatantly obvious. She would have her reasons, I guess. I, I wish I had the answers, Raylan. It's alright, I'm sure we'll work this out eventually. Eventually. It's going to bother us until we work it out, though. Are you ready for a lot of sleepless nights? <laughs> Maybe not, but I guess I'll just have to cope with it. Anyway, I think we've talked enough. We should return to our beds soon. I imagine if Kira found us talking at this hour. <sighs> I'd, I'd like to continue watching the sky. And then I'm heading back to bed. Make sure you're on court. When she returns to her bed, I can hear her whisper something. But I don't know really know what, though. Raylan, if you spoke to who I think you spoke to, the chances are you're going to be her new champion. Nearly every legendary hero links back to her in some way. But I don't know for certain if it's really her. We'll have to wait and see. I try to draw closer in order to listen in, but it's no use. She's already stopped talking. I wonder what she was saying. I suppose it doesn't really matter to me. I think I'll... I think I'll continue to watch the sky. Will a star really fall? <laughs> Probably not, but I can't say for certain. Wait, what's that? As I look on at the sky, I see a glowing shape. Also, holy hell, one of these scenes that isn't... Basically softcore porn. I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of cleavage on display, but hey, she's still basically covered up with her armor. He says, doing massive quotation marks. Oh, you know, and we've got an interesting background. Hooray! Sorry, I, I, sh I shouldn't be quite this sarcastic, but what can I say? It's fun. <clears throat> a streak of light going across the sky, a great tail of luminous ribbon following it. It's enormous, too. Almost as if it's swallowing the night. And one of the old legends I had read as a child described a serpent which ate the night sky. And I can't help but think of that as the glowing streak comes down towards the earth. 
to look on in wonder, the street begins to grow larger and larger. Something really is falling from the sky itself. That couldn't be possible, it can't happen. It's never happened before. But my eyes don't lie, something... Something is falling. And I've never before seen such a sight. It's burning too. A great flaming star is dropping from the heavens. And the entire sky is filled with its light now. It's as if the sun had appeared in the night sky. My eyes open wide as I recall that noble woman's words. One day, one of those stars will fall. One day. She must have known this was coming. The very ground beneath me shakes as the star draws closer to the ground. Armor, plates and weapon racks begin to rattle too. Wait, what if it hits the capital? We could all be destroyed. No, no, I won't panic. I have to keep my cool in the face of any situation. There's nothing I can do but hope it doesn't hit us. But to my relief, it doesn't appear to be heading towards the capital. Plummeting towards the earth, I can hear the thundering crack of its impact somewhere beyond the walls of the city. It's enough to make the entire barracks wake up. And panicked voices echo throughout the hall, everyone immediately reaching for their armor. What was that noise, really? It was a star! A star falling from the heavens! A, a star? How can that happen? I've never heard of this happening before. It's true. I've never heard of anything falling from the sky like this before. Is it an omen of some sort? I, I can't say for sure. No, it's Claire Danes. I, I'm calling it right now. It's going to be Claire Danes. And again, I will be very impressed if pe Actually, it's a... Actually, I'll be disappointed if nobody knows what movie I'm referencing, because it's actually a really good movie. You know what this means? Yes. What the Empress said to me. It was an omen. And the panic of the barracks begins to worsen. Ah, so... So, yeah, I was right, it was the Empress. And now she's... Has she figured it out? I would expect there to have at least been a sort of... Oh my god, it was the Empress moment. But, nope, no. Nope, apparently she just figured it out and is kind of blase about it. Arms and armour are beginning are being wildly thrown on, and it's not long before everyone is standing to attention. Raylan, I will get to your bed. Kira will be walking in here any moment. But I can't tear my eyes away from the sky. A terrible sense of dread fills my entire being. What's going to come of this star? There's too many questions I don't know the answers to. Please return to your beds. There's nothing to panic about. Many whispers spread among the novices doubting Kira's words. How is there not something to worry about? Unwilling to argue with their instructor, most of the novices begin to remove their hastily equipped armour and settle back into their beds. And Kira notices that I'm standing by the window. Get to bed, Raylan. That's all she has to say before I return to my bunk. But I'm not satisfied with that, though. I think I'll take a moment to see what Kira is doing in her office. I can't let them panic. Things are bad enough in the city as it is. If our soldiers panic, there won't be anyone left to keep order. The best course of action for now is to reassure them that nothing's wrong. I feel bad lying to them, but it's necessary. So she's lying to us to stop us from panicking? In order to keep order across the city in case we need to? I think I'd better take a closer look at the city then. See what kind of reaction they're having towards the star. As I look in the city, the reaction is what I'm expecting. There are people running wild on the streets, and the guards are trying their best to keep the populace calm. There's nothing to be concerned about. Please remain calm. His words do little to pacify the angry mob in front of him, and they throw angry accusations at him. All of them demand answers, yet he has none to offer them. And just slowly backs away, his pole arm pointed towards the crowd. It's not long before a large, angry mob has gathered. I could see numerous guards locking ranks to hold them back. If Kira told us that there's nothing to worry about, I'd say there's definitely something to worry about. Looks like the city's in a state of panic, too. But Kira told us that there's nothing wrong? There's something seriously wrong. Could we really just lie here and sleep while the capital's on the brink of chaos? I would go out there to quell it, but I know that Kira wouldn't allow me. Unfortunately, all I can do is obey her and head back to bed. Oh well, I'm sure we'll have a chance to quell it soon. Everyone is on the edge after the star fell from the heavens. Never before has something fallen from the sky, so everyone has a theory as to what it means. The most popular one is that the end times are coming. But aren't they already here? I don't know any other cities that are still standing. The capital is the only place that's managed to thrive in the blighted wilderness. The last time we heard any news from another city was ten years ago. And I can't help but think that they're gone too. Unless they became isolationists like us. There might be a chance that it's still thriving. My fire saying can't reach far enough for me to confirm it. So aren't we already on the edge of destruction? 
We're probably building our own tomb in a feeble attempt to keep the darkness out. Wall after wall, defense after defense. But for all that, there's something that everyone knows all too well. The capital stands alone against the darkness around it. No matter how mighty it is, it still stands alone. An empire's strength is its entirety, not just its capital. And we've nearly lost everything. Well, I can understand why people are scared, but you need to have... Let's face it, I have very bizarre views in that I believe that you need to... My attitude to faith is that you need to believe in something. Yo, know, and I'm not necessarily saying you need to believe in a god or a deity or you know, anything that specific. It could just be belief in the simple good nature of human beings. You know, belief that things will get better. You need to have some kind of faith, regardless of what it's in. You know, but, uh, you know, cause let's face it, I'm, I describe myself as agnostic. You know, I'm not arrogant enough to uh, believe that I know anything about what's going on beyond my tiny little bit of this world. Yeah, so, uh, let, let's, let's prefer optimism. That's a really bleak outlook, though. I like to be more optimistic than that. If we doubt, then we'll be consumed by the darkness. I, of all people, should know that we cannot doubt. But it's hard to ignore all of the doomsayers who walk through the streets of the capital. Everyone's afraid. They've been afraid for a very long time, but, but the falling star brought those fears to the surface. And there's been some talk that the Council plans to promote novices much earlier than they should, too. The soldiers and guards around the capital are being stretched thin. And if more are needed, if they are to maintain order... And that noblewoman's words have haunted me since we last spoke, too. Did she call that star down from the sky? What do stars have to do with her? I should talk with Gwyn about this. She knows her history a lot better than I do. I thought life as a soldier would be a lot simpler than this. But it's only become more complicated. I'd love it if all my problems could be solved by stabbing a few monsters, but it seems that life isn't so simple, though. I need to go see Gwyn today. There should be a brief moment before I have to leave for guard duty. In fact, I'd better hurry up and visit her. To my surprise, Gwyn wasn't anywhere near her office today. After wandering, I found her standing out in the training grounds, looking dazed. She's out in the training grounds of all places? Shouldn't she be in her office right now? Gwyn, can I speak with you? When she looks at me, the look in her face says everything. What is it you want, Raylan? Check if she's okay. Gwyn's obviously sleep deprived. And I should check if she's okay. You didn't get any sleep, did you? not like I needed to ask that. The dark rings under her eyes say more than enough. None at all. Since that star's fallen, there's been a lot of unrest in the city. The amount of letters being sent back and forth between the barracks, it's, 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 it's a nightmare. I'm taking a rest from it right now. My fingers would snap in half if I had to write another signature. So what do you need? I could use a distraction. Just thinking about more paperwork is going to make me pass out. Do you remember any tales about Adernia which involved the stars? Stars? Why stars? Does this have anything to do with that falling star last week? I'd be lying if I said it didn't. Gwyn gives me a weak smile. Uh, you're always so curious. I can't recall any at the moment, but there may have been some. I'll have to request some leave time to visit the castle's library. After this stack of work, there's no way Kira would be willing to deny me anything. Oh, thank you once again, Gwyn. Before I'm about to leave, she calls after me. Can I ask a favour in return, Raylan? When you're not too busy, could you do some far seeing for me? Just whenever you're ready. I can tell that she's just about to collapse. I'd better get her to a bed. Okay, I'll do it. Just get some sleep now. Thank you, Raylan. I think I'll just do that. Some smart of me, part of me feels slight envy. I can't take days off like she can. But now, now's not the time for petty jealousy. I have guard duty at the castle today, and I need to get ready. As I arrive at the council chamber, I'm just in time to see the councilmen shuffling to their seats. And they begin as they always do, with a list of items to discuss and address. It seems like it's going to be another boring day with these councilmen. The guardsman from the week before is here too. Welcome back. I hope you're ready for more droning. I know that I'm not. I can't say that I am either. Just bear with me then. Think of it as a training exercise. That doesn't make it sound much better. What the councilmen are debating about today seems to be the best way to cart supplies through the city. You are aware that our roads are becoming very hard to navigate. The population density of our capital has become nearly unmanageable. How exactly do we provide a way in order to reduce the traffic on our roads? Why don't we simply build more roads then? But that's what we're already doing and these roads are becoming choked faster than we can build new ones. But obviously the problem is that we're not investing enough resources into this. 
Might I also remind you that the streets are becoming almost labyrinth-like. Our best architects are already overloaded with work, simply figuring out how to add more roads inside this city. What we need to do is... After a while, I just let my mind drift out of my body. Listening to them is extremely draining. Well, once again, we've reached the half hour mark for this video, so that's probably a decent enough point to end this part. And say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.